everybody. We got some NHL parents on the show today. Tom and Ellen Atkinson, the parents of Cam Atkinson, who plays for the Philadelphia Flyers, gave us just uh, just one of the best interviews we've ever had on the show. I'm not going to lie to you um, about their journey as parents of five boys, uh, having a life, and, and the unique things along their journey that allowed their son to get to the NHL. Um, also, really proud to tell you, we've got a new title sponsor partner on the show, NHL Sense Arena is joining us as the title sponsor of Our Kids Play Hockey. So moving forward, we are going to be proudly Our Kids Play Hockey, powered by NHL Sense Arena. For those of you who don't know what that is, it is a virtual reality uh, ability to practice the game. Uh, goaltenders use it, players use it. We're going to be sharing a lot of information about it moving forward. Also, as part of the show, as a loyal listener, you get a pretty awesome discount on signing up for Sense Arena. You can use the code Hockey Never Stops at sensearena.com. Uh, if anything, just head there to check it out. This is something that's been growing in the game for the for a while, and it really gives your kids the ability to practice virtually a lot. And and the benefits have been proven to be clear. So again, I'll let them do the speaking for their product on their website because we're going to do plenty of it on the site on our stuff and, and within our podcast. But really proud to be partnering up with NHL Sensory here at Our Kids Play Hockey. Uh, okay, without further ado, let's get you this episode with Ellen and Tom Atkinson uh, and the journey of, of getting one of their kids to the NHL. Here we go. Hello, hockey friends and families around the world, and welcome to another edition of Our Kids Play Hockey, now powered by NHL Sense Arena. I'm Lee Elias, and I'm joined as always by my favorite line mates, Mike Benelli and Christy Casciano burns And today, we are joined by the parents of an NHL player many of you know, Cam Atkinson, who currently plays for the Philadelphia Flyers. But what you may not know about Tom and Ellen Atkinson is that they are the <laughs> parents of five boys, all whom have played hockey. Tom and Ellen met in Vancouver before moving to the East Coast, where Ellen is from, where they started their family. Ellen is the owner of Consigned Designs, which she has owned for 18 years, and Tom runs finance operations for a private hedge fund in Manhattan. And while we all know as parents we have our quote-unquote real jobs, hockey runs in the blood for this family. For all you listeners who have been asking us for another episode with parents who have successfully navigated the road to the NHL, this one's for you. Tom, Ellen, it's a pleasure to have you here today. Welcome to Our Kids Play Hockey. Good morning. Thank you. <laughs> hey, good morning. Thanks for being here. You know, I, I want to start with this question. We speak a lot on this show about the values of youth hockey, but I know that all of us who are parents in the game wonder what does it really take? What kind of sacrifices and determination from both the player and the parents does it take to have a child get all the way to the NHL? I, I know at one point of your lives, you had kids on four teams at once. So why don't you tell <laughs> us a little bit about the hockey journey as parents and the five boys that you uh, have raised successfully. I'll put it that way. <laughs> Go ahead, Ellen. I know you can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> it was all a blur, let me tell you, but it took a team. And um, Tom had to be a huge part of all this because four kids at one time were on a team. Um, we were so lucky that we belonged to a small little private skating club that backed the backed the games up on the weekends the mites squirts peewees bantams one played right after the other <laughs> so we were literally on the road when they were very small watching four games at the the least amount four games a day wow. every saturday and then every sunday back to back um it also, you know, we also had the help of others that that if we had to go in two different directions, um, you know, they would help us too. But quite honestly, what Tom, when they were young, we were together back to back at each arena throughout Connecticut, mostly um, watching games. And I mean, Tom was a coach usually of one or both. I mean, every other year, our Cam and Tommy played together. So that was a blessing because then it was down to three back-to-back -back <laughs> games each day. But um, yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was crazy. That, that was our weekend. Every weekend we were together as a family. Everyone came with us, all the boys and um, 
that's what our life consisted of. Right. Crazy. Um, let's just Crazy. throw some, yeah, throw some advice out there for parents who are going through the same thing right now and uh, feeling pretty chaotic in their lives. And it's kind of hard to see the bigger picture when you're in it in the moment. Yeah. You, you really both, you have to, as a family, enjoy it. When we first moved here from Vancouver, we had no children. And I was asked to coach uh, at Greenwich High School of our city team, which I think I did for 11 years. And mm -hmm. Ellen would come to all the games. And as the kids were smaller, they would, um, you know, come to the games with us as well. On Sundays, you know, I was always taking them as little kids to the ice rink and skating with them. And then as they started to develop, then I had to branch away from that and coach them individually. But, you know, logistically, you know, Ellen could be going in one direction and I could be going in another. We'd go up to Lake Placid and fortunately I did the peewees and I think the squirts one year because the coach wasn't there and they were able to schedule me like I was getting off one rink to another rink. And at one point, this is kind of comical, we were playing Chris Atkinson. Uh, I'm not sure if you know them from New Jersey. There was two Atkinsons and we had two Atkinsons. <laughs> And and those two were very good, and our two were very good. And it was Atkinson from Atkinson to Atkinson to Atkinson <laughs> on the. Uh, yeah. it, it was it was great, but those are the experiences that we would go to these tournaments and be able to experience the community, um, especially in Lake Placid when I coached the Junior Rangers Pee Wee Major team for two years up. Um, for the NHL division. So right. we were able to get a lot of really good life experiences. The kids would get billeted out in some situations, but the team effort from us and Ellen and myself being able to buy into it and really want, I mean, you got to have both parents that, that want to do it. Um, fortunately, or maybe unfortunately, we did not have a girl, so not sure she'd be playing <laughs> hockey or figure skating or doing something different. So um, we were all kind of in the same sport arena, which was good. Mm -hmm. You know, it's funny you guys mentioned this. Mike and I, Chris, we're all nodding our heads for the, those of you listening to this and, and for the parents listening. Um, we understand the divide and conquer mentality that it takes, especially when you have multiple kids in the game. And, and this starts with just two kids, right? When you have yeah. when you have five kids, <clears throat> it gets crazy. The other the other uh, quote we've spawned on this show um, that I think our audience really resonates with is that you're not crazy. It's the hockey world that's crazy. <laughs> The hockey, par the hockey parents, <clears throat> not the coaches. The hockey yes. parents are crazy. They can be crazy. Um, yeah, well, I, yeah. I wanted to move on to this uh, before we dive into kind of Cam's journey into the league um, because you guys are proud parents and it's very obvious of all your children. And one of the aspects of your kids' development that I definitely wanted to talk about was the awareness of burnout and mental health. Um, you, you told us actually that Cam at one point was being invited to a USA hockey camp, which is a really prestigious thing, but it was clear that it needed a break. Um, I was wondering if you could share that story and any others that you have about the importance of taking breaks and, and being mentally fit. That's that's an interesting story because it turned around in a way. Um, he loved lacrosse. He was very good at, at lacrosse as well. Um, he also and, liked vacations. <laughs> yeah, he did like vacations. He liked, that's correct. <laughs> and the U.S. development camp wanted Cam to go play for Team USA, which he did numerous times. But this was more of him getting an opportunity at, for exposure. Right. And he said that he didn't want to go. He said, I need a break. And we said, that's fine. And we took a break and he kind of got boycotted a little bit. Uh -huh. Um, and, I'm and sorry, was, what, age, what age are you talking about? I'm just trying to figure what, out his what, about what how age? old was he? Yeah. He might have been 10 years, 11, maybe 12. Oh, that young. Wow. Yeah, it was pretty young. Maybe 13. He, he might have been a little older than that. I, I would have, I should have asked him, but he was definitely yeah. under 15. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and they were very, very disappointed, uh, which mm. came around in, in a year after that, but it, which turned out to be very good because Team USA came to meet with me and apologized for, you know, what had wow. transpired because he totally was like off the radar. 
and he was yeah. and, and he was good enough to be on that radar yeah that's right i think that's two things right number one is the old adage if you're good enough they'll find you right if you're if you're good mm-hmm. enough <clears throat> and you're and obviously you as a family have to read that and say well if we burn him out and he's done and he's not helping team usa he's not helping himself right. as, as an individual and he's not helping yeah. his teammates you know that that re- we talk about this a lot on the show is that refreshing you know piece i mean one of the things i loved about the atkinson family i coached at immaculate high school for 11 12 years so we played against greenwich a lot and i remember the boys i'm like i'm like jesus is there any atkinson not on a team here I think, so, you know, we got a lot of that there's more than one of them so keep your head it's a, it's it a broadcaster's it nightmare just, it just yeah. wasn't fair it wasn't fair um but i think but i think it's like just, but just to watch his journey you know, because we're in, I mean, if the, the audience, you know, doesn't know, you know, you're in the world of Pacioretty and Quick and like there's like all these kids that uh, and when you listen to the stories of like the New Canaan Winter Clubs and the Greenwich <laughs> Clubs and the Dorothy Hamill rinks, the, uh, the it was intense. I get it. You guys played a very intense hockey schedule, but yeah. the free play and the opportunity just to be the big fish in a, you know, uh, in, a, in a small mm-hmm. pond and having the life balance of vacations and other sports, lacrosse and baseball and soccer. Like, I I just think that era in that time with all these kids that have really developed, you know, was really, really prevalent. And, and obviously maybe you guys could speak to that a little bit about, you know, the, not the, not even the pressure, but the, the, the non-pressure of saying, Hey, Cam wants to play lacrosse this, this spring. And, Mm. and the kids want to do these other sports, you know, do you think that was just because of the, the community you were in or is it because he was so good at hockey? Everybody's like, well, listen, let's back off this kid a little bit and let him do whatever he wants to do. Right. Or I mean, maybe you saw, you saw some signs, too, that were showing that say, ooh, you know, maybe we ought to step back and just let mm-hmm. him be a little freer and not so intense with hockey. It was all him. I mean, he requested it and we uh, yeah. honored it or just accepted it. And, and there was enough, pressure. By oh, the yeah. way, there was pressure was from pressure. coaches. I mean, yes. in some cases, a lacrosse coach said it's us or hockey. Mm. Um, this particular one, we didn't have a ton of money when the kids were little, and our only vacation was in August. We would go to Ocean City, Maryland with my entire family. <laughs> and it meant so much to all the boys. And Cam was going to miss it that summer because of this tournament and he's like i don't want to miss my one and only vacation um so but going back to the pressure there was a little bit of pressure for the kids um i used to fight it all the time i mean coaches were like we have practice on halloween night you are not going (laughs) trick-or-treating and i'm like yes they are they are no, going trick or treating. No, we I did. Mean, we moved our practices to earlier. Remember, yeah. <laughs> we, would, we would go. Yeah. Well, I think so that, I think would... that's I, I think that's my point. Ellie, is that is that you know that's you as the parent. That's your job. Yeah. yeah. Your job yeah. is to say, whoa, whoa, whoa! I'm the consumer. These are my right. children. Like I get it, and and I'm I was that coach too. I was like, listen, you got to be here, and you got to be at practice, and right. and, and we talk on this episode or on this show a lot about. Uh, before kids and after kids and when I was a 23 year old high school coach I'm like uh, there was no other thing going on in the world but my team like I'm like what do you mean I can't tell you we have practice at two o'clock in the afternoon that we have practice tonight at seven I can't can't just throw that at you you know because people are just navigating the world and I think when you have kids and obviously you guys went through it as a you know Tom as a coach without Mm -hmm. kids and all of a sudden now you have kids in the system you know it really becomes a a, a, you know an eye-opening experience to say Oh, geez. You know, I do have to give them Halloween. I do have to give them, prom. you know, the dance nights. I do have to Mm -hmm. give them the family vacations. Now, not every single weekend, you know, for 26 weeks, but you have to have that, that balance or we just lose these kids. We lose these Mm -hmm. great athletes. But you got to admit that that's hard to do. There's a lot of pressure on parents that, well, if your kid doesn't make it, Halloween night, he's not going to play the next game. Or if he doesn't pick lacrosse over hockey, that's it. His lacrosse career right. is done. Yeah. There's a mm-hmm. lot of pressure on parents to to cave and to give in to that. And there a is. lot of parents absolutely do. But the, the parents mm-hmm. that understand or listen to their children, which we need to do, really changes that decision, which I believe it may have taken us time, taken me more time mm-hmm. than you, because you're always like, let everybody play, 
no one wants to play for you and sit on the bench. It's got to be fun. Right. Um, and, you know, you, you bring up the skating club, you bring up, you know, the winter club, all those. I had all those guys on the team. I had Ben Smith. I had Max Pacioretty. I had Cam, um, Johnny Quick. So I show up to a tournament and they're all in prep school. And they, Mike, you'll you'll love this story. So I, I show up and we go up in some man's plane that was able to get certain kids. And you know what schools are like, prep schools? You're not getting out on Friday. Fortunately, um, John Gardner understood and allowed us to go. We went up with five kids and Johnny Quick. We show up. And the ref comes over and goes, dude, you can't play with five kids. I go, can I play? He goes, yes, but do you want to? I go, watch Johnny Quick in net. <laughs> and we beat these guys. I had Sean Backman, Cam, Tommy. Um, and literally, it was so much fun. The ref comes over and goes, I've never seen anything like this. But Cam fortunately got to play with some really elite friends. And he's still mm -hmm. really good friends with, like, you know, um, Patch already. Patch is, you know, from New Canaan, Warren, Greenwich, um, Downing's there, Ben Smith, um, Ellie, who was uh, Nick, Nick, Nick Benino, I mean, all Shatton these guys. Kirk. Yeah. yeah all the, so yeah, it's funny. Shatton my son Kirk. plays a lot of, my son plays a lot of like NHL 24 and, and he has a team <laughs> of all Fairfield County players and they beat everyone. They, 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 win the, they, 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 they win the Stanley cup every year, just, uh, just with uh, Fairfield County kids. So that, I think it's with, uh, with five players on the ice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, and that's awesome. And, and it, you know, that, I don't know that maybe that says less about you as a coach, but, but uh, I think it's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm a good recruiter. But what hell of a recruiter. <laughs> no doubt about it. But, but I think, yeah. but again, those are like, when I look at these players and, 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 and I'm in a good situation because I actually know these guys. Right. And I, and I watch like do that's the mm -hmm. Snapple Express years and and all these other times yeah. and the birds and and the other you know other people I work with like these for the most part like these are really well balanced you know mm -hmm. energetic positive families and kids like like just again does it help that their players were elite athletes probably um, only because there was a lot less pressure than the, than the other parent that's push, 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 push. You're like, listen, yeah. you, can take, you can take a day off. You're, 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 the coach is going to mm -hmm. kind of give you a little leeway. But to your point, like when these come, when these prep school kids, like they don't care, they're, they don't care how much money you have. They're all, they're, they, 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 they all are in the same boat. That's the whole idea of going to these institutions. But yes. I think you guys, but I think finding that balance and finding the way to put kids together. I don't know. I just love that the way those kids inspired each other. And, mm -hmm. and I mean, listen, I would have loved to see those practices because they must have beat the hell out of each other. I mean, it, you know, those guys you know, really compete. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We had, we had a lot of fun with it. There was uh, and cam got to play, especially when I did, because remember the peewees changed the birth year when I was coaching the um, junior Rangers team. So cam went up with the 88s and then it skipped over to the nineties. And I remember showing up there with a bunch of kids from Buffalo because they couldn't play because the Buffalo and the Hartford Whalers were having an issue over territory. So believe it or not, I had Patrick Kane on the team, but his mother, his grandmother got very sick. So I had all those Buffalo kids and we showed up and played Detroit little Caesars Cam's this big. These guys, I had the Bennett brothers. I had all these monsters. It got into a huge brawl because I didn't realize Buffalo and Detroit Little Caesars hated each other. <laughs> and, and Cam's like, I'm not going on the ice. So I had these 89 birth years with these big 88 kids. And we ended up winning the tournament on, on the other side of it. So it, there, there were great experiences. All and, and it was always fun. We always seemed right. to be going out for dinners or go-karts or going and playing laser tag or doing something that, you know, whether you're in Ottawa or whatever tournament, we always made fun of it. But yeah. just going, going back to burnout. Right. I mean, when we were at the skating club for many, many years and it, when I look back, it was really, really special because when we moved the boys to Snapple, which is, the team that you just referred to, Mike. Um, yeah. One of my sons burnt out so fast. And I'm imagining that's what's going on right now. I don't know, but I'm thinking most of our teams were 
in uh, the Greenwich Skating Club, they were local or they were easy to get to within an hour or an hour and 15 minutes. When yeah. we moved to Snapple, all of my kids were in different directions and they were going to Philly. They were going to New Jersey, Connecticut. They were going Long all Island. over that one of my kids said, I'm done. Mm -hmm. I am yeah. not sitting in a car one more Friday night in traffic to get to a game for a weekend and come home on like I'm done. I don't know how Cam and Tommy continued, but um, that ruined us. So I have a feeling a lot of youth hockey now is like that. They're not staying within Connecticut or New York. Well, they're they all the all-star team. They're all all-star teams. I just drove yeah. 10 hours from Pittsburgh last night. So, I mean, I, mean, I think, I think it's, <laughs> it is a nice job, Mike. I don't think we, I don't think we could have done that, Tom. I mean, we were no, so it's a different, fortunate. It's a, it's a, it's a, he did do it, Al, for a while. Not with the skating club. No, no, yeah, not no. with the skating club. But, but I think, I think that's away from there. To Ellen, to your yeah. point, it's and we talk about this a lot here with parents, is that that rush to that doesn't have to happen at 9 and 10 and 11 years old. Right. Like, that right. it doesn't have to happen. Like, you could find, we no. talk about, like, you could find the same crappy 10 year olds to play right down the street in Darien than you can right. in, you know, Westchester, PA. And I think right. that's or Ontario or Toronto. Yes. I think it becomes this churning money mm -hmm. business yes. model. And we talk about the business piece of all the time. I know I know we want to get to Cam's career, but he's on the back. Okay. Right we don't, <laughs> yes. he's already, no, already this is it. great. No, the, the think, audience is going to hold on. Don't worry. But I think this is yeah. like one of these mm. things where you as parents right now going through that and saying, oh, geez, I went, if I was in 2024, could I have done this with four kids? And, you know, could we have split, you know, no, all these no. families up? And and we see it all the time. And I, and I call it like the, like the cams of today are just making it through the gauntlet. Like they're, yeah. they're just fine. Like, like, look at you, you got one of four. Right. And it's like, and, and I'm sure they're all tremendous athletes yeah. You know, yeah. and, and good at everything they do. Mm -hmm. and it's just like, who, but who can, who can have the luck to get through the gauntlet and then make it through. And then it does become, I mean, it, it's the funniest thing is like when you, when it gets to Boston college, right. It's easier. Like when you that get was the most when you, fun ever Boston <laughs> college. Was right. But all of a sudden best. it becomes, it becomes back to the Greenwich skating club. Yes. Local play on yes. the ice every day. Mm -hmm. An intense fun atmosphere, a, 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 a more sane schedule, but it's funny how everything we do to get our kids to Boston college is counterintuitive to development at nine and 10 and 11 years old. It is. And, and we just look it at it and say, well, this kid made it. Yeah, but thousands didn't. Right. Thousands have right. failed. Thousands so Mike, Mike you're saying that the key to getting a kid in the NHL is just to have more kids, right? That's what it sounds like. The <laughs> you more, play the percentages. The more, yeah, you yeah. got to play the percentages. If you, gotta you have play 27 the percentage. kids that all play, there's a good chance, you know, actually there's no, there's still a low chance and none will make it. You Are know, you what, saying Mike has 27 kids? Uh, Mike has <laughs> Sometimes I feel kids. like it. Sometimes Mike has I feel hundreds like of it. kids as a coach. You, you know, a couple observations here um, that I've noticed. You know, last year I saw, <clears throat> I won't say the tournament name, They and they have since changed this. But they had some elite teams travel to five different destinations around the country to play the same opponents. And that's, was, I was going to bring that up. Yeah, yeah. And, and, that's and that, crazy. That, it's insanity to me. And and you know, again, to the to credit to that to that tournament, they they have changed it now. Okay, but it's you know, and it was kind of touted as exposure. And I'm like, okay, if this was 1985, where there was no internet, maybe. But you know, we don't need mm -hmm. that today. And uh, it sounds like to me, just listening to what both of you were saying is that you were able to put an equal amount of effort into building them, not just as hockey players, but as mm -hmm. people, right? And it's so important that we develop good people because that's who become good hockey players. And if they don't become NHL players, that's okay too. Um, yes. I think one of you alluded before about the business nature of youth hockey. And I think what's happened is that uh, you know, there's a huge bubble now around the business aspect and the elite aspect and the all-star aspect that we've forgotten about developing these young, young kids as kids. Um, and I think that especially I want to I want to impress this on our audience and please tell me if you disagree, you spent the time on building them as people as much as the hockey player, if not more. The fact that you uh, and again, I wanted to say this earlier, and this is so cool. This is why I brought up the USA hockey thing. We say all the time on this show, there really is not one tournament or one game or one event that's going to make or break your career. Right. That There are breakout events where your kid may get there and show up and it's like, wow. But the truth is, if your kid is great enough, if your kid is motivated mm -hmm. enough, it's not mm -hmm. based. You can't base it on one thing. 
And no. and I also love. I, I wanted to bring to light this too, uh, Tom. That you said this that USA Hockey came to you and 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 basically you know made amends. I think that's worth mentioning again as well, right? Because because at the time yeah. Cam was coming up, I'd say that was the the dawn of the mental health kind of time mm-hmm. period of like oh maybe it was a maybe this is important time period. Whereas he, now he we, we know it is. Team Connecticut that year because of it. Yeah. It was like so. Right. It was so silly that we just Great. backed off of it, and then it all turned around. And I will tell you, I've become close with the guys at Team USA because Cam has played, you know, with a bunch of the guys over in in Europe and so forth. I've gone to two of those tournaments, and those guys are serious guys that they're all about the development. But I think now they see the growth. I mean, it's one thing to have a good hockey player, but if you don't have a good athlete, student, good person, besides being an athlete, it all doesn't go together. Right, right. I I, I love that we're talking about that because I think a lot of people miss that. Uh, you know, in, in the, the younger youth development now, where Mike and I are seeing all the time that there's a tremendous amount of skill, but there's not a lot of hockey IQ. There's not a lot of, you know, emotional IQ. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and we plead with everybody that, you know, this has to be part of what you're doing, right? You have to make your drills yeah. fun. You have to make them enjoy it, especially at a young age. Yeah. Um, go ahead, Mike. I, no, I, 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 no, we I'm will just, move I, on I'm to Cam gonna, at some point. I promise. I'm just say, I, no, I'm just saying, like, in the early 90s, like, when I started Snapple Express, it was really because there was a void. There was nothing. Like That's it was like, how I know you, Mike. You know that? I cut I hate I, you. I, hate I, cut you I cut Cam. I cut Cam. Uh, I think when he was uh, 11. No, I'm only kidding. I wish I had <laughs> good decision. We had good. We had a great summer that summer. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> exactly. I had all the crappy kids. But I think it's like, I, I think it's, uh, you know, it's one of these things where but, but it was a void. But now everybody is that. Like there, there was a, there was a, there, there, there's no doubt that it's some in the, in the late eighties and early nineties of the, of the hockey world in, in the East coast and Fairfield County in New York, there's a void, there was a void in that, but now everybody's become that good, you, you know, and I think it's bad. I mean, I, I reflect back and say, well, how do you evaluate 200 kids on a sheet of ice in 15 minutes? You can't do it. And, you know, and then I think the other point of that is instead now, instead of looking for the person that's a good athlete, we were looking for the best athlete. Who cares what the kid was like? Who cares what the parents were like? Who cares if this kid was a psychopath or mom and dad were crazy? Like now it's, it, and USA Hockey's actually really done a great job of identifying yes. the person first mm. and then mm-hmm. saying, well, let's inject the talent in because now I can work within the team. I can work within travel. I can work within all of these other aspects. And long term, this is the person. I want representing our country. This is the person yeah. I want representing my team. And I think you guys probably saw mm-hmm. that more so evidently in like your process going through mm-hmm. Avon Old Farms and Boston College. Like when I look at a guy like Jeff Hamilton and I talk to him and say, well, what was your experience like at Avon Old Farms? And he's like, well, that was where I became a man. Like that's where I learned all the things that I wouldn't have learned just mm-hmm. being in a locker room and 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 on the bench. And, and it, all these right. athletes have to go through that maturation process. Some do it at 15, right. some do it at 19. And right. it's just, you know, well, it's, a, it's a waiting game of saying it's a long-term athlete development world. Obviously, mm-hmm. they're gifted children. Um, you know, uh, you know, C- Caitlin, actually, our producer, shared a, a social media post just recently about, you know, when 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 social life and girls and cars and when they when they get in the picture it changes everything too right so i think you know yes. that's, that's why we that. sent them to avon get them away from all that <laughs> right, right, <laughs> right 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 make, make it make but i think it's like one of these things where um i think what you guys have done in the story you know that, that that's a success is that watching the boys mm-hmm. you know kind of go through and be and be people first and i'm sure people that are mm-hmm. around you know that like they know okay these are good people oh by the way that kid plays in the nhl like yeah. you know right. and i think that's that's just that's just a byproduct of who they yeah. are M- mike right. another interesting thing if if you guys do get to know cam and all our boys um cam's always uh acceptable he's always accessible mm. He, we do, um, we have a foundation that gives back to, to veterans, uh, and so forth. Cam and Torts have obviously been friends away from hockey and they're, um, putting together to give a couple service dogs away. It's those kind of things that 
regardless of the hockey, but the community mm -hmm. being, you, you got to be a good person and you got to be accessible. I remember when Cam was younger, some lady came up to me and she's like, what kind of skates is Cam using? My son mm -hmm. wants to get the same skates. Um, and one of the things we taught our boys was you never know who's looking at you. You never know who's talking about you. So be careful what you say. Be nice mm -hmm. to everybody because I've never heard Cam said this, Tommy said that, you know, Steve or all any of our boys, he said that about me. And I think if you get away from the chatter, the gossip and all that other nonsense, which exists everywhere, I think it just makes them a better person. And last right. thing, Mike, get Hammy on the show. I'm good buddies with him. <laughs> He's he's been, we've been asking him. He's, he's so crammer shy. You know, he's such a he's such an introverted no. guy. <laughs> I'll torture him. Trust me. I talk to him a lot. <laughs> and I, have to, I have to tell you, even watching Cam, he he has great swagger on the ice. It, it, to me, it seems like he's always got a smile on his face. And when you watch him in the interviews, if if he messes up, he owns up to it. He yeah. doesn't try and, you know, blame mm -hmm. everybody else or the situation. He'll say, no, that was on me. Um, so I really admire, you could tell he's just got such great character. Uh, somebody for our kids to look up to. Mm -hmm. um, what was it like, his first <laughs> NHL game for you guys? I just, I mean, I get a chill just thinking about what it would be like in your shoes. What was it like when you first saw him step on the ice as an NHL player? Tom? <laughs> well, it, interesting enough, jo John, Cam broke his tib fib, and I'm just going to weigh into this story a little bit, and uh, when he was at Avon, and he literally fought his way, and John Gardner gave him a key to get into the rink at midnight, late at night, and he worked hard to get back on that ice. John Downing uh, was a uh, surgeon, uh, or orthopedic surgeon for the New York Jets, and um, he ended up, and, and he had five boys, I believe. And Jack Downing played with us as well. Kids played hockey. John loved hockey. Um, John passed away, and I was at the funeral. And it was the day that Cam was trying out for the Blue Jackets out of college. And I'm looking, and I want to correct me if I'm not saying this correctly, but looking for a psalm. Is it a, a psalm? Uh, like they have all the numbers. Yeah, a psalm. Mm -hmm. A psalm. Mm -hmm. I saw all of a sudden, and I'm looking everywhere. I'm just, I saw 13, 13, 13, 13. He always was 13, 13. All these numbers came up. I've got a missed call when I'm in the funeral. I walk outside and he goes, I made the team. <laughs> so it just so happens. I'm from Vancouver. My family owns the Chilliwack Chiefs, uh, Langley Lords in British Columbia. have owned it for 45 years. And I think that... Um, they played Vancouver and they were playing against, and I'm thinking of, of the, of the goalie at the time, because he played at Boston college. Cam gets on the ice and scores. The first goal. Uh, yeah. Corey. Corey. So I meet Corey after he goes, <laughs> Mr. Echo, I gave him an easy one to get him started. <laughs> so what, and, and hell, I think you were there. I think Tommy was there. Some of the boys, they feel well, yeah, like they, the blue jackets flew us in flew right us for out. the home yeah. game. Wow. Yeah, it was so, so exciting. And I fell yeah. in love with Columbus. And mm -hmm. I won a couple of really big 50-50s there, which was really more fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, think, wow, I think Cam scored on that that first game because first I think game he, he did. I think wow. um with the exception of him being hurt last year and one other year, I think he has scored in every first opening game. Yes, yes. In his That's career. Cool. <laughs> yeah. it's just so cool but uh yeah it was so yeah, exciting Cam, yeah he's he's amazed us from day one I mean the kid must have had a vision or not even a vision but he he did it all on his own I mean yeah. he was determined and you know Tom and I would look at each other because this kid was so tiny um, even in high school, he yeah. played Ben Smith, uh, you know, in he the would Ben Smith. <laughs> he, I mean, the, the size difference was Ben Smith was double his size. And yeah. I mean, he amazed us. We had no expectations ever Nothing. of any of our kids going to the NHL, let alone Boston College. Nothing. 
And I mean, he just kept yeah, no, surprising who believed in us. Him, yeah, the most was Mike. I, I coach with Mike Backman. You know Mike, right? Of course. Of course. So Mike <laughs> and I coach, and we had the Pee Wee uh, or the Midget Majors, and Cam played on that team. And Cam scores the overtime goal. Puck bounces off him, goes in. Now, he's an 89 playing with 86s. And I'm like, you know what, Mike? Mike goes, you have no idea what you have here. And I go, but look at your kid, Sean. He goes, my kid's an 86. Your kid's an 89. He goes, do you realize that difference? He goes, your kid's going to the show. And it was Mike Backman that honestly, still to this day, has so much love, support, and commitment to Cam as a younger player uh mm-hmm. and cam does when he's in town he'll go help him you know with his camps and things like that well it's, it's so cool to have you know so and and you know we're a really unique area here on a podcast with hockey parents because they know what 89 and 86 actually means right yes. That's That's what what I know everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so, so if you're if you're tuning in from soccer or lacrosse then, then uh, you'll need to you'll need to look it up but this i think the non-age podcast <laughs> Yeah, right, right, right. Just so you know, um, but I think, but but you know, having guys, and I think every community, you know, that's what we look for. Like whether you're in Minnesota or Northeast or California, now in Florida, and the non-traditional hockey markets, you're looking at, you know, you need guys like the Michael Backmans, and you know, that are around, that are professionals. Yeah. Like they're 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 mm-hmm. they're not easy. They're hard. Like these guys are hard. They're hard guys. Chris that, Keeney. That, <laughs> that love that love their players. I think like Chris Gerwig, I think about him, like, like yes. a guy like him is like a loving person, but he's hard and he's tough. Yeah. And, you know, when I see these tiny, you know, these are the kind of people I love being around as a coach, you know, and being in these director positions because you can trust them that they're going to do the right thing, say the right thing, motivate the right way. Uh, and they're going to get the most out of their athlete, whether you're a, a tiny little, you know, player that, 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 that maybe has some potential or, you know, this mm-hmm. big, massive, you know, individual that, that people expect a lot out of you already. Right. So I think it's like, that's, what's great about all these little hockey communities is that you've got to find those people. And I think, you know, Cam would be the first one to say it, right. That listen, I'm nowhere without those people, like without that, without those people pushing me. Yeah. It looks great where I am now, but all that, you know, that, that diamond was built by all this pressure I had, you know, positive pressure I had when I was, mm-hmm. when I was a young, you know, Listen, he had one. Marvin for God's sakes, my, <laughs> well, I won't mention that. But yeah, but everybody, yeah, yeah. So you had the toughest, you had the toughest of the top. You had the toughest. Yeah. Of the well, you, you know, we're, we're alluding to, to my next question here, which I think is important for the listeners as well. And, and, and Tom, I know you were his coach for many years, but you know, I'm interested in what made the great or horrible coaches stand out? Because I think a lot of times um, as parents, we're looking, well, who knows the game the best? And in coaching is so much more than just knowing the hockey IQ, right? It's a big part of it, but it's really, can you express that? Can you communicate that in a way that it's retained by the player? Because again, I've always said, you can be the best tactician on the planet. If you can't effectively communicate, it's irrelevant, right? So what do you think from a development standpoint of all your boys, right? were the best coaches and why? You know what? I I coach them a lot. So I'm going to tell you from my wife's standpoint, make it fun. (laughs) And I mean this seriously, because I would have some kids that would come off the ice crying and I I would go talk to them and they're like, I just want to play. So I think if you can make it fun, we always made, we we would do a lot of skill set but would do a lot of fun competitive skill set through right. cones, racing each other, doing things that they're if it's not fun, if work isn't fun, I wouldn't be doing that. So I'm just telling you. And if if you can, the coaches they've had, they've seen, they've seen it all. And mm-hmm. um, some coaches are different, but the coaches that got the most out of the kids were the ones that made the development fun that's really what i would say I if it. it's if yeah no i listen it sounds simple but i think and, and mike mike said this earlier like the younger version of me coaching uh, i don't think i understood that as much as i do today right mm-hmm. it, it, is that you know you have to make this smiling if you're not it, it's a game it's again you hear the right. nhl players say that all the time it's a game it's a it's my job now but it's a game yeah, yeah. And, to, and to Alan's and Tom's point about, you know, them having to recognize that as parents, you know, mm-hmm. it's so hard for young, for any coach 
to rec to, to accept the fact that that's the way they're going to run their team because there's so much pressure on them. Like, what the hell? You just having fun out here? Like a lot of parents don't see. <laughs> I've gotten that. I've had people tell me that. Yeah, like, well, well, these kids are having too much fun. And I joke around, like, even my little learn to play kids and stuff. I'm like, guys, you know, if you're not, you know, you're smiling out here, that's not a good thing because we can't have you, you know, you know, we can't have you too much fun. It is hard work. This is, this is supposed to be hard. But I think hockey you know, is zero fun, sir. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, that, that, and that's, you know, all these, all these guys are, you know, all, when, when you look at the professional level, uh, you know, at any, at any profession, it's got to be fun. You've got to love coming to the rink. So, you know, obviously, you know, we've seen, and Cam's had, you know, some tough coaches at the NHL level. Yes. And I think, oh, you know, yeah. to, to, and, but there's some, there's, there must be some, there's, there must be some element of fun in there though, because they, that you, you couldn't do it. Yeah. And also I will tell you one of the things and and Cam will share this with you, the coaches, his NHL coaches and, you know, Columbus always struggled. He always stayed. Um, he was always respectful mm. when, if someone was let go, He'd always reach out to them. Um, and it really has played well because even when those coaches get on other teams, they go out of their way to meet Cam in a hallway. Nice. And that and and that is really cool mm -hmm. to me for him. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh, I, and I imagine you're just as proud of that as him being an NHL player. Oh right? yeah. You know, I could be more <laughs> proud of that to be honest with you. That's because that's it's awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that, you know, to the parents listening, when you listen to Tom and Ellen, I think that's a really important point you both just made, right? Is that, you know, when you're, when you're lost in having an eight, nine, 10, 11 year old and you know, they're screaming or they don't want to wake up. Christy and I just talked about this yesterday about just the, the, the joy, but the strife of having young kids Right? right. When it's all said and done in terms of them becoming adults, mm -hmm. there's two parents of an NHL player saying that I'm actually more proud of the type of person he's become right. than oh, yeah. the NHL player he's become. Yeah. Right. Just, and I think that's a note. Go ahead. Just a little example. Uh, the other night, Cam was benched. He was a healthy scratch. To me, that's devastating. I want to kill. Like, I am so competitive. I'm like, you didn't oh, write an email my... about that? You didn't write an email? <laughs> no, 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 email no. I had to buy a new TV, though. <laughs> <laughs> the way Cam handled it, yes. Yeah. he, with, with such dignity, mm -hmm. like, I was texting him, you know, and my outlook was so different than his, and I was mm -hmm. so impressed with what he yeah. was saying. Yeah. When, I mean, he is just, it's hard, whether you're a kid or an adult. I mean, to be benched because you're not putting the goal, in, the, the puck right. in the net mm -hmm. is devastating. Like mm -hmm. he can't be more hard on him. More, there's no one harder on him than himself that he's not putting the puck in the net. Like and he's a natural- And against his team. He's a natural goal scorer. And yeah. to be and benched by the coach who- they have an outside love for each other. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, oh my God, how come he's doing this to Cam? Like, it's not like he doesn't want to score a goal. And Cam just is so reflective. And he's like, look, it's on me. I mean, I, say that. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 need to, I need to be better. Yeah. And, um, you know, I'll say some things to him that I'm not going to repeat. <laughs> but he's like, no, no, mom, you're wrong. Like, it's really like, I just, I just am going through a bad time and I just have to reflect and just keep trying as hard as I can. That's all I can do is I can control what I can control. And it's just so impressive. Well, yeah. Well, you know how lesson. I feel when you yell yeah. at me. <laughs> what a great well, you lesson. don't count you don't count but i think but i think it's but that's i mean i think that's a great see this is what i love is that you have this perspective like you i'm sure you guys are more upset like you're up there like what the hell yo we gotta send oh, she, email she, we gotta let's call let's find out what's going on like i'm heated up right but i think and i think but the perspective is you know well do we need to do we need to be that heated up with an eight-year-old and i think no. like this is where no. you you know that's the lesson is like we can't expect an eight year old to go back to mom and dad mm -hmm. and say, no, I got it. Cause the eight year old is just going to parrot the parent. Yeah. And I think we, for right. so, so now I think the, the other side of this is being the parent saying, Hey, listen, mm -hmm. the coach obviously has some differences. They want to get some motivation out of you. They clearly love you or they like, you, or, or you got to spin it any way you have to do it. Right. You're on their team. Mm -hmm. And 
um, you know, let's take some self accountability and let's make let's make this work. You know, for you, right. like, how can we? And Luke talks about this all the time. Like, how do you take that experience and make it a positive? And then now we have to do it in a pressure cooker of us as parents and kids. Right. And, like we all, we're we're all self centered. Like we only care about our kid. We don't care about the <laughs> team. We don't care about what the locker rooms like. Like it's always like I, I laugh all the time. Like I can't believe they don't name that person captain, or I can't believe they don't right. have this person. I go, you're not in that locker room. You don't know what that right. player is like. You don't know mm -hmm. what that player does in practice. You're just watching it on on TV. And I think you know, to and you guys obviously have a different perspective. You're living it. But I think right. having I, you know, and it's okay yeah. for you to be emotional and and pissed. But at the, right. at, at the end of the day, the athlete has to take uh, the athlete right. has to yeah. take. That. And here's how gracious he is, because I'm a reporter and I've I've had to throw the camera and microphone in front of athletes' faces mm -hmm. who are pissed because of whatever happened in the game, and they can be rude and obnoxious and whack you away. But Cam, mm -hmm. he had to face that camera. And all those reporters asking him a question about his situation. And he was so gracious. And again, he said, that's on me. He took full responsibility. Mm -hmm. My heart was just being squeezed when I, I can't imagine <laughs> what, what it was like for you, Ellen. But I was yeah. like, I can feel how difficult and, and it he was. knew you and were coming too. Trust me. He knew <laughs> the night before I'm on the phone I, with him. He goes oh, so <laughs> unbelievably gracious. Yes. I was yes. just, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I've been in those situations too, Ellen, with my kids where I don't understand why they get benched, why they're sitting, why they're not out there playing. And I want to wring that coach's neck, you know? Right. And so. just like you, you just have to, you got to work through your emotions. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, let the kids handle it um, and let them figure it out, which is right. what yeah. Cam is doing. Yeah. There's an old saying, yeah. you you love the one that needs it the most. <laughs> so you you need to give the love to the ones that need it at the time they need it. And with five kids, you got to share a lot of love at different times. Sure. Some needed it sometimes. Ellen yells at the referees, for God's sake. <laughs> I mean, we I can, do not. You should hear her it's, downstairs. Oh, well, I do, but it's in the privacy of my own living thing. room. <laughs> yeah, I know, You're but I'm in one. the other room. <laughs> You're the only one that I'll, hears me. I'll do something I rarely do on this show. The, the date is January 8th, 2024. <laughs> and uh, I, I don't know if you do both know this, but um, I, I live in, <clears throat> sorry, in Philadelphia. So uh, I've been watching Cam for his whole career. Now, you may know him a little better than we do, obviously. <laughs> um, but but my prediction is this, knowing the type of accountability he has, is that, as we said, he's taking that benching in stride. I have a feeling when he scores a goal, uh, the floodgates are going to open. And I They're think he's, open yeah, up. he's proven yeah. that many times in his career. Yes. And the reason yeah. I'm bringing that up is not because I want to, like, you know, fact check me in 2027 to see what happened. <laughs> the, the, the reason I'm bringing that up is because that is an aspect of a great player. Right. Is that, that they can take the hit. And we see this in youth hockey all the time. That the kid will take a hit, not be accountable. Mm -hmm. They can't recover. And as Mike said, this is your opportunity as a parent. Right. To to really look at the situation of oh, what do you control in this situation? What can you work okay. on in this situation? Can you bounce back? And mm -hmm. I'm going to take it a step further. This is not a hockey skill. This is a human skill. Mm -hmm. I have always said you are defined by how you respond to adversity, not the adversity that happens. Typically, you don't have a lot of control over the adversity. You have control how you respond right. to it. And I think that your son, and again, he's he's proven this over his entire career. This is not a, a new thing, is that when one when one goes in the net, the whole, whole polarity of the situation is going to flip. And and maybe maybe John Tortorella knows that about him. Maybe he sees that about him. He does, him. yes. You know? He does. Right? He and knows then, him <clears throat> well enough. Yeah, he does. And that, that's another aspect of great coaches is understanding how to motivate a young player. Mm -hmm. And and again, in youth hockey, it's got to be done a certain way. When you're getting paid, it's a job. You have to understand another way. Um, you know, another, <clears throat> I only had two questions left. I wanted to ask this one about Cam too. <laughs> I, I think this is an important one for the kids that listen to the show, right? Is that when he made the NHL, the work didn't stop. It wasn't, oh, I've made it. I'm here. Uh, if anything, I'm sure he worked harder. So can you talk a little bit about the, the, the training aspect, the, the stuff mm -hmm. that we don't see on television, that keeps him becoming an all-star, a great player, and, and where he's at today? So he had to um, – he worked with uh, Mike Prentice, 
uh, in the summers. A lot of the NHL guys that come back to Connecticut, Mike, you know who yeah. who Prentice is. And, you know, he just started to get into more of a routine, get more into health, um, getting into treatments, stretching, learning how, because one of the things when he first made a pro, uh, he was taking a sign and goes, you know, there's 84 games or 86 games, whatever it is. And you, the younger guys seem to get out of the gate for 20, yeah, lose some <laughs> steam, and then some guys just fall right off and end up in the minors for a while just because you got to fill that role. So every year, and fortunately now that when Cam's been in Columbus, he owns the battery. So he's got his own ice, his own training facility. He's he's up early and mm -hmm. he's pretty gluten free um, with his diet. He's really true to, you know, his body and listening to his body and uh, nutrition is is key for him working out um, and doing it early, not taking the month off after your because that other month getting back into it is worse. So he right. doesn't he doesn't start. He might take a week off, but I think nutrition, staying up on his health um, and just training. He, he and getting skates. strong getting strong yeah but he's and not putting like, weight on in the summer putting weight on because yeah. they a lot of weight comes off when they yes. start the season mm, that's an interesting perspective you know, yeah. he's a, he's a, and, and he's a big gel stick guy so i like him like that so, <laughs> so, so I, but I, but I, you, you need some gel sticks Mark? no i got too many from lounsbury lounsbury sends me gel sticks as I, I go through those a lot with our kids we, we are big we're like so so watching cam and you know the battery is a great example actually of you know finding places um, that you could be not in practice mm -hmm. and, you know, a non-traditional hockey related working out, but having a long-term, you know, view of development, like say, okay, I really got to work on, like, I, I remember just, you know, listening to interviews, it just the gel stick was a good example of just say, well, if I can add five mile per hour on my shot or shoot from 10 feet yeah. farther out, that's a couple of million dollars in my pocket. Like, yes. like if I can, if I can increase my performance and now if we can start putting that down level by level, if you're 10 years old and you can just increase your performance just a little bit by understanding that if you're going to a tournament that it can't be Chipotle and Taco Bell, it's gotta be, <laughs> you know, getting up in the morning, you know, having a, a routine, right. having a good breakfast, hydrating, you know, stay, mm -hmm. you know, and like the kids, like I think a lot, most kids don't get is the whole process of after the game mm -hmm. and the recovery process starting. Yeah. Because yeah. when you're 12 and 13, you probably can play, get up and play and play. And eat a Big game. Mac. Yeah. But yeah, and you, and you could do that. But when you're in college and, and you, now you're in pro and you're in, you know, yeah. you know, again, and they get, and I'm sure, you know, they get a lot of resources, but they don't have those same resources given to them, you know, when the season ends. Like during yeah. the season, it's probably much easier well, for him to maintain. You know, Mike, one of the things I want to bring up, and, and this is something I've noticed from pro athletes or really pro people, right, is the the pursuit of perfection, knowing that it's not achievable and having that higher level goal, right, and that that higher purpose that you know you really can't achieve. But, but in pursuing it, you achieve so much more than if you just try to, okay, I want to have this many goals this season. Right, which I'm not saying is not a good goal to have. I'm just saying that that infinite game, I, that the term I always mm -hmm. like to use from that Simon Sinek book, if that if you end up pursuing the infinite game, infinite game, knowing you can't achieve it and you can accept that mentally, it's an amazing place to be in, right? Yeah. Because because you you're you're loving the journey, right? And and I think that's another thing we we forget sometimes. And again, look, it yes. happens to all of us in your life. There's moments, there's things that happen that take you, they knock you off course. Right. Yeah. And, and, and it's hard. And I, again, going back to what we said earlier, it's how you respond to that. So you know? Lee, one of the things also that we've kind of haven't really touched on is, is life in general. These are young men. These are adults. Yeah. They're family men. They have children, they have wives, they've got dynamics away from the rink. Cam comes home. Natalie is an absolute rock star. Cause honestly, you got to buy into what is my husband? What is our family need? Right. For everything, just because they're traveling a lot. And he brings the kids to Voorhees. He brings them to the rink. I got a call yesterday from Declan. They call me Googs, by the way. And <laughs> Ellen's Gammy. I'm sorry, but that's our nickname. Gammy and Googs. That's how we're going <laughs> to yeah. rename the episode. It's, it's yeah. Yeah. Gammy, Gammy, and Gammy and Googs. <laughs> so he's like, Googs, I got a big day tomorrow. And I'm like, well, what, what's going on? He goes, it's my first day of hockey. 
and he goes yes, in something <laughs> and then he goes in something else i get to bring lunch to school oh. <laughs> so, so so cam will get up and probably bring them to school head over for the pregame skate today you know he gets to spend time with them and i know how much those children now they have fallon has changed his life right mm. and and that's what people don't realize these are real people with families that have kids that are sooner or later going to go through everything that everybody's listening to on this podcast in the next 10 years. Right. And it's cyclical. And, but to see how they as a family are with the family, it's amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I got to watch uh, Max Pacioretty's uh, uh, oh. son tried out with our, um, uh, our our brick team up at up at Stanford, and I was laughing watching him. I was I was watching him pacing back and forth and back and forth, <laughs> kind of laugh. And I'm just like, yeah, ah, you know, hey, they're you know, every everybody's a parent at some point, right? And I think yes. it, uh, you know, you're yes. just watching your kid, like you gotta just you know, please do but the right listen, thing. Listen, hey, hey, Max, if you don't like it, buy the team. <laughs> <laughs> right. Get yourself, get yourself uh, in a better I'll spot. I'll say this too that you know, Tom, we do a lot of team building uh, with with our groups and in our businesses, and one of the things I, I coach coaches on is that if you had the same players the same roster every season i'd ask the question do you have the same team and i said the answer is always no because life happens and as you said when you get to professional coaching marriage divorce kids injuries parents life life happens life. Yes. right and and I'm, yeah. i love that you brought that up and it also allows me to bring you on for another episode which we maybe will do but <laughs> But no, it, it, it's a good point because I, I think let's talk to the fans of the NHL listening to the show just very quickly. Mm -hmm. You see so little of these people's lives. And, you know, when you work in the game, you start to realize that you get a, a lot of empathy. You see so little, but we are so judgmental on what oh. they should be doing <laughs> with their game, knowing absolutely nothing about the, the tactics, knowing nothing about what's right. going on in the locker room. And right. so I, I always try and kind of just just uh, I always say fans are insanely important to the game. There, there is no doubt about it. But it's can you give a little bit of grace to the understanding that, you know, nothing about what's going on in that room? You know what? Fans, people. fans yeah. and parents are really the entertainment of the game. Yeah, <laughs> that's a book we're going to write. Uh, we're, we're writing a lot of books here do i have to like <laughs> underwrite this stuff no, no, that's where we come in we're building a new business here right now it's called gats right. and, and, and gammy's uh uh guy <laughs> and gammy, huh? and oh, yeah. um, that last question for me um there are a lot of parents obviously that listen to this show and uh let's let's be very realistic we've all had that thought of you know i wonder i just wonder if this kid of mine can do something in this game <clears throat> um, whether it's it's a positive thought or a negative thought, uh, as two parents, again, of several boys, one who's made it to the mm -hmm. NHL, had a very successful career, speaking to the parents listening, any words of advice, wisdom for them about the journey as a whole? Education first. <laughs> That's what we went for. That's why when Cam could have gone to the development program, mm -hmm. fortunately, we had the financial resources to send two boys to prep school. It, it was it was a hockey school for sure. And John Gardner really wanted the boys there. But on the same hand, we like when they wanted him to go to the development program, I'm like, guys, I want him to get an education. That's key to us. More importantly, he knew, I believe, as a freshman, he got a full ride to Boston College, I believe. So he wow. knew very early. So that was really everything that we had hoped for our boys. Tommy went to business school at Boston College. They both played hockey. Um, I, I mean, sometimes you just don't know. You can dream about it, but I just we were... I need to just say something that you're correct in the older with the older kids, you know, high school, yeah, um, maybe late middle school. But I will tell you the struggles I had in elementary school because I was the one that was taking the boys out of school on a Friday right. afternoon. Yeah. And the amount of um, anger and, and pushback from the teachers and the principal, it wasn't easy. And all I kept saying in my own head and heart was that two hours of school, of sitting down in school, 
is not going to outweigh the experience and the mm -hmm. learning that they're going to get with a team and and travel and play because it's all a learning experience and i kept saying that in my head am i right am i right you got and in I trouble in for my, that I, what's yeah, that i did the same argument my kids got yeah. detention so i don't know well you know but you, you know, know but that's, and, that, and that's my art that's my argument you know that's my I, wife's argument all the time back like we go to pittsburgh it's like okay well we got to go to the andy warhol museum we got to go to the steel museum yeah, we got to right. go to the tram we've got to go we've got to go do these other things that when you're in there you can't just sit in your hotel all day but right. if you could come no. back and right. I, I don't personally but i would Alan, wish you're, i wish you're teachers 100 percent right um, and I always try to convince the teachers ahead of time, hey, look, we've right. got this term, but, but we're right. going to the right. hockey, you know, museum. We're going to be seeing. Right. Yeah. I, wish, I, wish more gonna... I, I wish more teachers would take. I wish more teachers would take that and say, mm -hmm. okay, well, send me a paper back on the Andy Warhol. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So Ellen, teachers, right. if you're listening, ease up yeah. on us, okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
but go ahead. I'll, I'll let you share it. It wasn't a podcast. It was reality TV before oh, no. reality TV became famous, before Kardashians, before anything. And somebody contacted me and said, I would love to put a camera in your van while you're in the car with all your boys and do a whole reality series on it, all on conflict. And I turned around and said, my boys never fight. <laughs> I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like, no, no, Today. it's not going to work out. My Ellen boys and Tom never plus fight. Five. There's no Is conflict. It... Yeah. yeah. You would have been a YouTube sensation. I think no, I, I would have. I think I would have. But we're. I'm just not the type of person that could put out my family that way. Well, luckily, gotcha. we can all do it I now gotcha. on our own with our phones. <laughs> yeah, yes, very true. We can. We yeah. can. If there's anything all but this digital TikTok technology gives us. We can, yeah. we can do that. Yes. Right yeah. <laughs> yes. We can have the hockey parent of the week now. When we're all just recording it. Um, guys, listen, <laughs> I, that's our time. I was going to say, Mike and, and, and Christy, do you have anything else you want to add before I close? Yes, I'm going to start the children's yeah. book, Goose and Grammy, tomorrow. No, Grammy. <laughs> it's Gammy. Gammy. Gooks and Gammy. Gooks and Gammy. Children's try book. hockey tomorrow. <laughs> my little, my little three, Caden, Cam's middle, calls be me careful. Gumball Gammy because I'm Here always bringing gumballs. <laughs> Even better. Even better. I know. Gumball I love gammy. it. No, I love I, it. I, I, I'm you gonna be are honest. amazing. Thank yeah. you so much for sharing your story. Thank Very you. Inspirational and fun. And uh, gave us a lot to really think about too. Yeah, I'm sure we did. <laughs> hey, Mike, Mike, I'll leave you with one last thing. I coached the Boston Iceman. I had oh, 17 kids, story. 17 kids that played in the NHL from PK Zupan. Think of all the 89s, Hayes, Cam, um, that whole group. I literally had 17 kids on that team. We went undefeated uh, for three years. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, as a local hockey dad and hockey person in the area, you know, where you guys grew up with your kids, and we certainly have, have really enjoyed your journey and, and you know, what mm -hmm. the boys have done and certainly what Cam's done. And I think it's, uh, you know, it's, it's great. For, it's great for the area. And it's great to see him, you know, doing what he does outside the rink and off the ice. Mm -hmm. And all those great uh, charities is involved in and, and the different, uh, you know, business opportunities he's he's doing yeah. outside the game. And we talk about like that's a, that's really what this podcast is just finding, you know, letting parents and kids and, you know, because there's so many hockey players that listen to this and, and you know, they're in the car and they're driving home and and they're driving from practice like, oh, OK, I, I could do a little bit of this and a little bit of this. I better get I better get my grades up. I better, you know, maybe communicate with my teachers a little bit better. And, uh, you know, and just understand that it's your, you know, you, you, if you love this, if you're a player and you just love this, like Cam Acton said, loved it, then you're going to find a way to get what you need to get. Yeah. And you're going to, yeah. and you're going to make sure you take care of all the things you need to take care of. And mm -hmm. you better hope you have great parents and a support system that can help mm -hmm. you get there. And cer certainly they, that your, your boys have had that. Yeah. yeah. And Mike, Thank you know what, you. there's a lot of single parents as well. And that's probably even more difficult. Yeah. And, you know, we've always had to work around that and help. Uh, those mm -hmm. kids and make sure that we got them to the games and were supportive and you know they had supervision and things like that so it's yeah. more challenging as well that's yeah, awesome well, i'll say i really hope it works out for that johnny quick guy you were talking about earlier uh, i mean you know just... what he's doing <laughs> what a, great what a, yeah. i hope you're listening johnny you know you're a knucklehead yeah. you're never gonna change <laughs> three stanley cups <laughs> later i think he's doing all right yeah yeah, yeah. He um, lives in our town, which he's there, stalls there. Um, who else is up there, Al? Um, I don't know, but when Johnny Quick was a young boy coming to a game to play at the Greenwich Skating Club, his dad got a flat tire on the way, and guess who drove by, not knowing who it was, <laughs> but Tom saw a man, and maybe you might have seen hockey gear in the car, but you stopped um, wow. to help the kid get to wow. the game wow. oh my god and you didn't even know it was johnny quick and his yeah. dad but no, it we've was. been we've been friends play. a long time in his that. hall of fame speech he better say there was this one time my yes. car that's right. yes, for sure. and it was tom atkinson if um, i knew yes. who it was i would have made sure he never made the game. Yeah, yeah yeah yeah. i'm sorry i'm sorry i have no room in the car for you yeah i, I can't wait to have <laughs> yeah, here. we'll have to get his parents on the show too i, I yes I, Tom Allen, I gotta Good tell parents. you, I, I have loved every second of this episode. And I, I know the listeners it was fun. will. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. So I just wanna to, before I close it out, thank you both. 
uh, not just for your, your contributions to the game in this podcast, but for, thanks for just being great people. Um, I think that's that. It's just it's so important that we share stories like this and share these uh, mm -hmm. th these types of you know like like tips and, and tactics and the things that we do as parents because it takes a village, right? And and it, it really does. Yeah. yeah. So thank you so much for being on today. Thanks, thank guys. you. Thank yep. you. That's going to do it for this episode of Our Kids Play Hockey, powered by NHL Censoring. Remember, you can listen or see all of our episodes at ourkidsplayhockey.com. Uh, for Tom and Ellen Atkinson, Mike Benelli, and Christy Cash, Anna Burns, I'm Lee Elias. We'll see you on the next edition Bye. of Our Kids Play Hockey. <laughs> Take care. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye. We hope you enjoyed this edition of Our Kids Play Hockey. Make sure to like and subscribe right now if you found value wherever you're listening, whether it's a podcast network, a social media network, or our website, ourkidsplayhockey.com. Also, make sure to check out our children's book, When Hockey Stops, at whenhockeystops.com. It's a book that helps children deal with adversity in the game and in life. We're very proud of it. But thanks so much for listening to this edition of Our Kids Play Hockey, and we'll see you on the next episode.